Welcome to BKW Physics. I'm Mr. McCarthy. And we're going to start off today with refraction. And it's when you bend waves. And in specifically, a lot of my examples that I'm going to talk about today are bending of light waves. And I started off with a basic picture, which could help you understand uh, a real life scenario where refraction is occurring. So, say you're standing here, stick figure A, and you're looking towards the ground. And when you look towards the ground, it appears to you as though there's some, let's say, shimmering water on the ground. You, you, you think there's like a puddle here. But in reality, there is no puddle. In fact, when you walk to that spot, it's perfectly dry ground. How is that possible? The answer is refraction. So let's dive into the picture. Your eye, your brain, you assume that light always goes in perfectly straight lines. That's the way your brain works. So, you believe that the light is coming straight from this direction right there. That's where you apparently see, that's where you think you're looking. Okay, so you think you're looking at the ground right here because you're looking downward. But, in reality, the light is being bent, bending the waves. And light is being bent because of the difference in density between the cool and the warm air. So you got to have some really warm air near the ground, some cool air up above, has different densities, and as the light goes through it, whoop, it bends it. That bending of the light makes it so the actual object, in this case the sky, okay, the blue sky, appears to you, the blue sky appears to be there, or your brain says, well, the blue sky is not in the ground, the blue sky has to be on the ground, oh, it's water on the ground. See how that process goes? You get, you get faked out because of the fact light is being bent. Another example of this real quick is if you're watching the sunset at night, it already set. I'm sorry, I hate to ruin it for you. It already set because the light is actually, the sun is actually dropped below the horizon, but the light is bending around the curvature of the earth because of the difference in densities again. And so when the sun sets, it already set a little bit before that. Okay, that's a refraction example. Now I have two other examples for you to check out. And we're going to turn off the lights here, and um, hopefully the camera will adjust in a minute. Uh, the first thing I have is I have some hairs here, which you definitely can't see on the camera until I illuminate them with the laser. You can see, I think you can see that on the camera? Yeah, a little bit. All right. These are hairs, fiber optic. It's if you take a fiber optic cable <clears throat> and you tear the covering off the outside, it looks like really thin, um, whitish, plasticky looking hairs. Now, you can shine light through these, and this is kind of the way fiber optics works. Light goes in one end, light comes out the other end. So you can see it better like this, okay? So, and you've seen little, little things in the wall that you can get that use this property of fiber optics. That's not that impressive, but What's more impressive is if I actually take a fiber optic cable that still has the covering on it, and I shine the light in one end up here, and hopefully you can see on the camera, but I know the people in the classroom can see that if you watch the end down here, the light's coming out the other end. You see that? Yeah. Okay. How in the world can that possibly happen? This is curved. Light goes in straight lines. How are we getting it through here? Well, it's properties of refraction. The light is being bent, and the details of that we're going to have to dive into on another day when we talk about total internal reflection. So we're able to send light through wires that are actually curved based on this refraction property. All right. Now I have a huge chunk of plastic here, it's not huge, it's pretty big. And what I'm going to show you here is that we can send light, well, if we send it straight through, first of all, you can see that the laser beam shows the light traveling straight through the plastic block. But as I turn or angle the laser, the, the laser's coming down at a pretty sharp angle here like this, see? What do you notice about the light as it travels through that block? In the block, it looks straight. But the angle that it comes
comes into the block does not match the angle that it's going through the block. Look, look again, so you can see that. That's the, the whole key to this right here. Can you see that? The angle that my laser uh, pointer is tipped does not match at all the angle that's going through the glass block. That's refraction. Now, let's, let's dive into how do you calculate some of this stuff. So, I'm just going to trace this block, and you can make a, some sort of a box in your notes also. And to kind of recap what we saw here, this was the glass block, which I'm removing just because it's hard to hold. We noticed that the laser was coming in, say, at some sort of angle like this. Would you agree? Is that close enough? When it hit the block, how did the angle change? Did it turn this way? Or did it turn this way? A or B? It kind of turned B. And I'll kind of estimate that it was about like that. Then did you notice what happened when it left the block on this side? Come back down. It went back to the angle that it came in at. So this angle might look something like that. So I've kind of traced the path that the laser followed. And here's what's really going on. When the laser hits the surface of the plastic block, we can draw ourselves a normal line. And a normal line is simply perpendicular to the surface of the glass block. And if we were to measure this angle right here, and compare it to this angle right here, we would notice, as you can see visually, that the angle with the one tip is a bigger angle than the angle with two tips. Okay? We definitely shrunk down the angle. And why in the world is that happening? And the best way I can show it to you, the easiest way I think, is to think of this like a wave front. Remember how uh, this line is a ray? And so if you're thinking of this more like a wave, those are the crests of the wave. The, the wave is traveling like this, right? Which part of this ruler hits the glass block first? The right side or the left side? Well, you can see the right. In fact, I've already kind of crossed the plane there. You know what I mean? So the right side hits the glass block first, and what does it do? Well, glass is more dense than air, so it starts slowing down. And this thing starts curving. Boom. Hence the reason now we're pointing this direction. Now, these are going through which part of this ruler starts to leave the glass block first? You can see this tip starts to leave. What does it do? It speeds up. And you're back to that direction that you started at. And it slows down the same amount it speeds up because you're going from air to glass, glass to air. So the amount you lose is the amount you gain. Okay? Does that all make sense so far? All right. Now, every material, every material has a different index of refraction. Refraction, not refraction. Index of refraction. So every material has an index of refraction, which is given the letter N in physics, lowercase, lowercase n. And indices of refraction simply mean this. If you were ta to take the speed of light in a vacuum and compare it to the speed that light was traveling in this material, so for instance, C over V, where C is the speed of light in a vacuum. I mean, what's the speed of light in a vacuum? 3 E8. 3 E8, right, meters per second. And then you were to calculate the speed of light in this block of glass, which is going to be a lower number because it's slowed down. So this is speed in the material you're talking about, maybe it would be uh, 2E8, for instance. I'm trying to keep the numbers simple so I can show you an example here. Then you would say the end value is 3E8 divided by 2E8, or in other words, 1.5. Now that has no units because the units cancel the units. You're left with no units. It's an index, so it has no units. 1.5 is an index that indicates 
the relative density comparison between the two things that you were looking at, or how much it slowed the light down, basically. There is a list of these in your reference table, and it lists indices for like uh, the end value for point glass, the end value for corn oil, the end value for alcohol, the end value, and it goes through a whole bunch of different things, and you can use those indices on the second page. Yeah, third page. Second, second page. So you can use those when you need them. Like if, it, if the problem says to you, you're going from glass to corn oil. Well, now you can look up the two end values. You got them right there. But there's an equation that relates, so you can figure out the angles also. And that equation goes like this. N1, or the index number 1, times the sine of theta 1 is equal to N2 sine of theta 2. This is called Snell's law. This guy was Willbrod Snell. That was his name. And he came up with this law that related end values and angles so that you could determine how much light was going to be bent by. And this is like, this all leads up to why you can have contacts or glasses. Because he hadn't figured out how much light gets bent by certain materials, then they wouldn't be able to figure out how much to bend the light so that you can see clearly. Okay, so he's the guy that kind of came up with all this stuff. Really important work right here. Well, what's n1, n2, theta1, theta2? Back to this original diagram. The n1 is out here. It's where you're starting. It's the material that you started. The n2 is the material that you go into. The theta one, in our picture, is this angle right here. It's the angle that you hit the material at. And the theta two is the angle, once you got in the material, of how far you got bent. Okay? So you got n one theta one, n two theta two. By relating those with a sine function, they, this equation will always stand to be equal. Okay? And at this point, as a class, we're going to break into some examples. And for the video, that's it for today.